Glory to God. I'm going to I'm going to use as a topic today uh, the life of faith. The life of faith. And when I say that, I'm, I'm, we, we need to understand that faith is not a fad. Faith is not a movement. Faith is a lifestyle. Faith is a lifestyle that we have been called. We've been called to a life of faith, to walk with God in the earth by applying our faith just like Jesus. Amen? Amen. Now, before we, uh, we, we open up the, and go to a scripture, uh, let me give you this, this opening statement. We are to apply our faith. We are to apply our faith in God's word and get the same result. Now, I want, I want you to look at that. We are to apply our faith in God's word and get the same results as Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So the life of faith is about, it's about walking with God in the earth just like Jesus. Amen? Amen? Was there ever an occasion during the ministry of Jesus that God was not able to work through him to change somebody's life? Never. Never ever, right? And so in other words, in other words, uh, Jesus walk with God, his relationship with God, his walk with God, his walk with the Father, enabled the Father to have full expression in the earth. Amen? Amen. The Father was able to fully and freely express himself in the earth through Jesus. Amen? Amen? Without being limited, without being hindered. Amen? Amen? And that's what he wants with us. Each one of us, as believers, each one of us in our walk with God should be that avenue for God. That same Avenue, that same vessel, if you will, that same uh, means for the Father to express himself. Amen? Amen? Let me say it this way. What would our peace look like? What would our joy look like? What would our life look like if, if in our everyday walk with God, you absolutely knew that when you said amen after praying, things were different? What, what would our life look like if we knew that in order for something to change and become right, all we needed to do was pray. If we knew all we needed to do for a condition to change and become right in our lives, if we knew all we needed to do was say. Right? I mean, imagine now, you never encounter a situation that you have to bow your knee to. You never encounter a situation or a condition or a circumstance that you have to live under. 
that you have to accept, that you have to be bound by. Are you following what I'm saying? No. This life of faith that God has called us to, this He's called each of us to actually walk with him in the earth, to, uh, to apply our faith in his word, just like Jesus, so that we can get the same results that Jesus got. Amen? Now, that's, this life of faith, this is a life of dominion. Amen? Amen? See, I, I think, I think we, we even have trouble even dreaming to that level that, that nothing can stop us. I understand what I'm saying? It, it's hard for us to even dream, dream on that level, to think on that level. How many of you have ever had a bad dream? Some, some people have had bad dreams. Why? Just hearts and minds so gripped with fear and worry and stress and anxiety. Mess your blood pressure up. Mess your peace up. You follow what I'm saying? Why is that? Why is that? You know why that is? Because in, in that moment, Regarding that situation, we have lost sight of what God has said and done about it. And we have allowed ourselves to become preoccupied with the problem as well as man's solution to deal with it. And in the limitations of man's wisdom and man's solution, that's where, that's as far as we can go. We can only, if, 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 ah! we're, we, we, we are called to a life of faith, which means we're to apply faith in God's word. We're to draw our hope for better from God's word as it is revealed to us. But too often as the body of Christ, we're, the hope we have for better is not tied to the revelation of God's word. The hope that we have for better is tied to the wisdom and solutions of this natural realm. For, for example, for example, the Bible says that Jesus himself took our infirmities. He bore our sickness. He bore our sickness at the same time that he bore our sin. Right? Yeah. And so, so with his stripes, we were healed. Amen? Amen? But rather than that being the basis for our hope of healing, we've allowed the world to condition us to tie our hope to the doctor's diagnosis and the prescription. Are you understand what I'm saying? So the world convinces us that this is a problem. We need to be afraid of it because these are the conditions and the effects it can have. And now once it's got us in fear, it comes along, oh, but here's the answer, here's the solution. And so now we have, oh, this, you mean if I take this pill, if I take this dosage, if I do this, then I'll be all right, I'll be well. So what happened? We've now tied our hope of wellness to man's solutions and answers. And that's not faith. That's not a life of faith. Are you following what I'm saying? No, we got to get back to the word as our source and our foundation. My hope, my expectations of wellness should be founded on my revelation that I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus. Not, not the prescription. Because see, the prescription is flawed, it's faulty. It's man's attempt to come up with an answer that sin caused. 
and it's void of God's power. So it it's it's it it has it's 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 got sorrow tied to it. It's insufficient. See, because it because it cannot heal. It can rearrange the chemicals of the body and mask the symptoms, but it cannot bring healing to the disease. Only the word can heal. Only the word. So, so what, what, what the body of Christ has been, been, we've allowed the wisdom of this world to manipulate us in our thinking to the, to the point that what we do what we do is we say we have faith in God to heal us but we only but 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 we only believe that we can be healed according to our understanding of of what the doctor says about it. And see, see, see here, here's how I know that. Somebody gets an evil report, bad diagnosis, bad condition. We say, Lord, you're our healer, and we're asking you to heal us. <clears throat> but meanwhile, now, now, we're, we're following the counsel and the advice of the doctor. We're taking the prescriptions. We're, 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 we're being faithful to follow the instructions that we were given. Right? Because the hope, our hope of things getting better is in following the prescription. We say we're believing God and trusting him for our health, what, but if we are, why is it, why is it if things don't continue to progress and get better, but it seems like things stop, turn around, and get worse, we're still following the prescription because, because, because we tied our hope to following the prescription. So we have hope of getting better because we're following the prescription, we're claiming to trust and believe God for our healing. But then when it don't look like it's coming about, we come up with stuff like this. Well, in God's timing. In God's timing, I'll be healed. Well, you know, he, he's, I, I, he know I needed some rest. Y'all follow what I'm saying? And this is crippling us. This is crippling our faith. Here's how you can know if you're in faith or not. If, 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 here's, here's a good indication uh, if you, as to whether or not you're actually walking by faith. Uh, what are you doing with the word? Do you know what the word says about your situation? How highly are you esteeming the word? I, I've heard some people that talk about they, they want prayer. And, and uh, well, Pastor D says he gives his testimony all the time. Somebody called him, told him, I, want, I, I need prayer. He said, okay, uh, get your Bible. And he hear them hollering in the background. Hey, so who y'all see my Bible? Where's my Bible? And if you don't know where your Bible is, you're not living by faith. How can you not know where your Bible is? I mean, really? Now, you know, we got, we got these phones and, and carrying on all this kind of stuff now. I mean, I mean it's convenient. It ain't the same thing. It's not the same thing. Because there's all kinds of stuff can get up in that phone. But if you got that Bible and you're going through the pages, man, you can you can accidentally come up on some nuggets on your way to a scripture. Now, how are you going to say, 
I, I walk by faith and I don't know where my Bible is. Come on, Pastor. You follow what I'm saying? I, well, I'm just trusting God. I'm living my faith. Well, what, where are you standing on? Well, I don't know. I'm just trusting God. No, you're not. On, if you don't have what he said about it, we're not in faith because faith comes by hearing. You follow what I'm saying? Man, I, I'm already behind. I ain't, I ain't even gave you your scripture yet, have I? Look at Matthew 21. Oh, Jesus, you got to help me, Lord. I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you what the, the, the challenge is. You, go, you find Matthew 21. See, over there, man, with them folk in the Philippines, they, they don't come to church because it's Sunday. They don't come to be politically correct. They don't come because of what somebody's going to talk about. They don't come to judge and evaluate the preacher and see if they agree with it or not. They come because they, they have placed their hope in the gospel. They come to hear the word because their intention is to live by it. Yes. They come to hear from heaven and they make whatever adjustments they need to make in their hearts and minds to line up with it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And listen, they ain't, they ain't waiting for Sunday. There was one group, there was one pastor there, he, he tried to get on the schedule at the last minute and, and so all the Sundays, he said, well, just give me a Wednesday morning. We had a church service Wednesday morning at 8.30 a.m. You follow what I'm saying? Yeah. It ain't about the day of the week. It ain't about convince. No, if, if you're not willing to be inconvenienced to hear God's word, God's word doesn't matter enough to you. Are you following what I'm saying? And so, so I guess what I, I guess what I, my, my challenge is, or I, if you want to call it that, uh, you know, is that that I, man, it's just a lot of stuff stirring in me that 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 God opened my eyes up to while I was over there. Part of just seeing the people's hunger and thirst for us, they pulled some stuff out. They made a demand on some stuff. They got some stuff stirring up and flowing. And uh, and 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 it's it's good. And I want, I want all of us to get it. I want all of us to get it. I want all of us to get it. God wants us to get it. What I'm saying? And so I, I think the biggest thing, the biggest thing that, that, uh, that, that God is wanting to get across to us today is that as children of God, as believers, we can, we can, we can put our faith to work just like Jesus and get the same results. Amen. Have you found Matthew 21? Amen. Let's look at verse 18. If you can pull that up for me, Matthew. Okay, so now this, we, we familiar with this particular incident, but most time when I minister it, I look at it from Mark's account in chapter 11. But this is Matthew's account, and I'm kind of coming in on the end of it. Verse 18, now in the morning as he returned into the city, he hungered. T talking about Jesus, verse 19. And when he saw a fig tree in the way, he came to it and found nothing thereon but leaves only. And said unto it, he's saying to the tree, this is Jesus talking to the tree, let no fruit grow on thee henceforward forever. Right? And presently, the fig tree withered away. Right? Verse 20. And when the disciples saw it, they marveled, saying, how soon is the fig tree withered away? They marveled. They were astonished. They heard Jesus say some words 
to a tree and then they saw the effects of what Jesus said and they were marveled and astonished and they're exclaiming, how soon is the fig tree withered away? Look, Jesus, you just said it, man. You just said it and look what happened. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, if you have faith. Now that word have faith is not a question of whether or not you, you possess it. That word have is the word apply. If you apply faith, if you exercise faith, if you put your faith to work and doubt not. Now let's stop that right there for a moment, doubt not. That, that word doubt, the, it, the, the, the root of it is actually duo, it means double, right? And so what, what, that's, that's what James is talking about. You can't be double-minded. So, so, so when it's talking about if you apply your faith and doubt, it's talking, about, it's, not talk, it's talking about don't be divided in your heart. Are you understand what I'm saying? Don't be divided and going back and forth in your heart in terms of what you believe. Now, in your mind... The enemy will try to send thoughts that, that to, to manipulate us into thinking and believing something contrary to the word. When that thought comes, you're not in doubt because the thought came. Now, what you do with the thought is going to determine whether or not you enter into doubt. If you accept the thought and entertain it and consider it, you're going to go down a line of reasoning, and at the end of that line of reasoning, you're not going to have an answer. And because of, now once you go to follow the line of reasoning and find no answer to help you, now, now a second belief is taken for me. Now there's doubt. And if that doubt goes unchecked, that leads to fear. And if that fear goes unchecked, the fear takes over, the faith ceases to be active and engaged. And there's a disconnect from the power of God. So, so to not doubt is not doubt in the heart. It's not to be divided in the heart in terms of our beliefs and convictions. So if a thought comes that's contrary to the word that tries to make you think and accept something contrary to the word, once you recognize it, just take it captive and cast it down. You doubt not by choosing life, by choosing the word. Are you understand what I'm saying? When a second thought comes, you have a choice. I can entertain it and roll with it, or I can stay with God's word and roll with that. Just choose God's word. Just choose to exalt the word above the, th of the doubt and speak the word. You follow me? He answered and said to them, Verily I said unto you, if you have faith, if you exercise faith, if you apply your faith, if you put your faith to work and doubt not. Now notice, you shall not only do this which is done to the fig tree, but also if you say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, it shall be done. Now hold that verse right there for a moment, please. Did you see that right there? Jesus says, if you apply your faith and don't accept doubt in your heart, you will not only do this which is done to the fig tree. So now let's stop right there. He's saying, you can say to this fig tree just like I did and get the same results. Are you seeing that? He is acknowledging that through faith in his word, in God's word, we can get the same results as Jesus. Now just see now on that for a moment. Just think about whatever's pressing going on in your life right now that, that may be causing a challenge or a struggle. Can you see Jesus accepting that and bowing his knee to that? And conforming to that? No. What would Jesus do? He would inquire of the Father. Father, uh, here's the situation, X, Y, Z. Now, what you got to say about it? What would you have me to say about it? What action would you have me to take about it? You follow me? How do we know that? Because the word tells us he only said and did 
what he heard and saw from the Father. So Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, what? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. Don't try to figure it out and make sense with it. Check with God. Go to God about it. Acknowledge him in all your ways, in your, di your direction, your decisions, your choices. Inquire of the Lord. What do you say about this? And the Bible says he will direct your path. Now, when the direction comes, you, upon hearing the direction, faith came. If he's going to direct your path, those directions have to be communicated to us, right? Through the ministry and the operation of the Holy Spirit, directions are communicated to us. That's hearing his voice. That's hearing the word. And upon hearing, faith comes. Faith comes. Are y'all following what I'm saying? All right, where were we? All right, so, so not only, you shall not only do this which is done to the fig tree, but also if you shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, it shall be done. Jesus is saying, if you'll say, believe in your heart that what you say will happen, you'll have what you say. What you command to happen shall be done if you believe it when you say it. Are you following what I'm saying? And all things. How many things left out of all things? All things whatsoever you shall ask in prayer. That word ask whatsoever you shall place a demand on. And you, see, we are to make a demand on what's due us by virtue of covenant. So whatever you ask in prayer, whatever you make a demand on in prayer, according to the covenant, believing, you shall receive. He said, and all things whatsoever you shall ask in prayer, whatever you place a demand on in prayer, believing, believing what? Believing it will be granted you. You shall receive it. So in those two verses, Jesus is saying, you can have what you say and you can have what you pray if you believe it when you say it in prayer. Amen. Are you following what I'm saying? He said, he they were marveling at the fact that the tree dried up. Jesus says, not only will you do this to the fig tree, he's saying, man, you can do the same thing. Are you following what I'm saying? He's saying you can do the same thing. Now, 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 we, 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 don't, we don't have to go around looking for a fig tree to command it to dry up. Just, let's just take inventory of our lives. And let's, evaluate let's make an assessment of what's currently presently going on in our lives and let's begin to judge those things by the light of the word yeah, yeah. and if we find that something is presently going on in our lives that is contrary to God's word we must judge that as illegal and unlawful that's your fig tree that's your mountain yeah, yeah. begin to inquire of the Lord Lord what do I say to this situation what do I say concerning this situation? And then, see, what is that? That's acknowledging the Lord in all your ways, and he will direct your path. And as you hear the direction, faith came, now act on it. Speak and act according to what you hear and see from the Lord. Yes, yes. That's walking with God, just like Jesus, getting the same results. Yes. Are y'all following what I'm saying? Yes. Now, Go to go to First John. I have one First John two and something like that. 
whatever that one is in 1 John. And I want to come back to this point. So somebody remind me, remind me of this point, that we must make our faith personal. We must make our faith personal. So, so 1 John 2 and 6. Now notice this. He that saith he abideth in him, talking about Jesus, ought himself also to walk, even as he walked. Amen. Jesus walked with the Father in the earth. All the miracles that God did through Jesus, he was able to do them through Jesus because Jesus applied faith in his word. Those miracles that happened by the hand of Jesus did not happen because he was the son of God. He did not walk in the earth as the son of God in the fullness of his deity. Yes, he was the son of God and acknowledged it. But he walked in the earth as a man through faith in the word, anointed of God. Y'all follow what I'm saying? And right here we're told, he that saith he abideth in him. How many of us would say we abide in Jesus? Jesus is our Lord and our Savior, right? We've been joined together with him. We're one spirit. So prayerfully, we are abiding in him. Well, he that saith he abided in him ought himself also to walk even as he walked. Can you give me that in the Amplified Classic? Whoever says he abides in him ought as a personal debt ought to walk and conduct himself in the same way in which he walked and conducted himself. And how is that? Through faith in God's word. Yeah, yeah. Through faith in God's word. Through faith in God's word. In other words, God's word needs to be the foundation and the basis for everything I believe. It needs to be the basis and the foundation for my thought life. It needs to be basis and the foundation of my speech and my conduct. If there's anything about what I believe, if there's anything about the way I think, if there's anything about what I say and how I conduct myself, that I cannot trace back to the word, I'm not in faith. I'm not in faith. What am I doing? I'm operating by man's wisdom as opposed to God's wisdom. What am I doing? I'm operating by an inferior system of government devised by a fallen man in an attempt to overcome the effects of sin and the curse. And it'll never work. It'll never work. Are you following what I'm saying? Uh, when, when you make this your lifestyle, you find that it's a lot of, it's a lot of TV shows you can't watch no more. Not, when I say can't watch, I'm talking about I mean, you can't enjoy them anymore because the truth you know won't allow you to accept it. It won't allow you to, to, to flow with it. But why? Because you're going to be judging and evaluating the, the lines from the actors according to the word. You're like, no, that ain't the Bible. That ain't in the word. You follow what I'm saying? You would be like my wife fussing back at the TV. <laughs> <laughs> Nah, she, she say that's what I do. <clears throat> but, what, but the point is, you come to a place in your walk with God where you, you begin to get a sufficient level of truth stored up. And you unconsciously judge what you see and hear by the truth you know. And when you come across something that don't line up with truth, it, it's, it's like an alarm. It screams. It, ag it agitates. It aggravates. You, you, can't, you, you, can't, you, can't, you can't flow with it. You follow what I'm saying? Oh, Jesus. It, it'll make you question who you have tried to make a hero out of. <laughs> you follow what I'm saying? It'll make you quit. I know my wife is praying right now. I know she's praying in tongues. She think I'm going so well that I. It'll make you question who you make a hero out of. You follow what I'm saying? Be because Because I, 
it, if I'm going to walk with God, I can only walk with God, interact with God, relate to God according to his word. Right? And on the level that I have revelation and understanding of it. Right? So if I want to interact with God, serve God, and receive God, I can't go outside the word, right? I can't, in other words, I cannot expect to receive from God outside of or beyond the scope of his word. Can I? Can I? No. No, I, it's not going to work. You follow me? So, so, what I look like celebrating Celebrating. See, see what we do sometimes. We try. We celebrate people and in historical events, particularly if this person is the first one to do it. Don't let it be the first black of doing of doing something. We gonna highlight that and celebrate and all that kind of stuff because before up to this point, ain't nobody black ever done it. Right? So, so, you know, I remember in history, people used to celebrate uh, Joe Lewis as, as a black boxer who was a heavyweight champion. We, we try to live vicariously through other people. We, 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 we call ourselves identifying with them, and if they make it, somehow we think we made it because they part of us or we part of them. And we celebrate, and, and which is, you know, it, it's not, it ain't wrong in and of itself, but, 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 but. If I'm going to walk with God, at some point, I'm going to be forced to make a choice between going with the word and going with this person just because we the same race. At some point, I'm going to be forced to make a decision between exalting what God says is right or celebrating this person just because they're the first black at it. Come on, Pastor. I'm just saying. Man, it is quiet up in here. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm just saying. And, and it behooves me oh Jesus what are you doing it, it behooves me how how uh, I can I, I have a problem with certain laws that are passed but I help perpetuate it with my choices I'm just saying man it's quiet up in here I'm just saying Your faith must become personal. In other words, we got to take the mechanics out of it. I can't just jump up and start quoting some scriptures just because I know that scripture's in the Bible and it seems to fit this situation. I need to make, sh I need to inquire of the Lord first. and get his take on it. So then my action should be come from what I heard him say, as opposed to just reacting because I know something is in the book. My faith must become perfect. How many of you, well, you don't have to, it, it, well, I'll ask it this way. Have you ever in your life, or have you ever known anybody 
who just absolutely had to have a miracle. And right away. Got one person. Anybody else? Okay. All right. You know the first step out, the first step to take to get you out of that mess and into God's best, the first step is Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Acknowledge God. Acknowledge him. Acknowledge your trust in him. Inquire of him. Right? Lord, I need your help with this. What should I do? That's the way out. Not just run into my favorite scripture just because I know it's in the book and, and go to confessing something. It's not necessarily inco incorrect, but it's, it's incomplete. You understand what I'm saying? For example, for example, I remember, I remember there was a situation where this person was talking about, complaining about headache that they had. Headache was going on several days. Well, my reaction, because I know what the Bible says, I just went to praying and interceding for the person to be healed. I'm confessing the word. Himself took by infirmities, by the stripes of Jesus. We're here. I'm declaring healing. But one day, I was, I was in the shower. My mind was quiet. I was just worshiping or whatever. And, and that situation came to mind. And before I could just run along and confess some scriptures, the Lord said, healing is not what they need. Now, here I am confessing healing scriptures, praying and declaring healing scriptures because I know those scriptures in the book. But the Lord said healing is not what they need. He's, he said those headaches are not a matter of sickness and disease, so they don't need healing. The headaches is because they're carrying the care and they haven't cast it over onto me. It's the worry and the stress that's causing the headache. You don't need healing. You need to trust me. Cast the cares over onto me. So now when I heard that, the next opportunity I had, I shared that with the, with, with, with the people. And they received it, made the adjustment, boom, headache's gone. So it's a lot of times we just, we just, we just, bah, 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 just confessing scriptures because we know it's in the book and it seems to fit. But did you inquire of the Lord? Did he say, say that? Did he say, do that? Are you following what I'm saying? That's what I mean. You got to make your faith personal. You follow? Remember when Paul was on that ship, big storm going on, and all everybody on the crew, many days had passed. They hadn't seen the sun. They hadn't seen the moon. All hope that they was going to make it was lost. But then here come Paul. Cheer up, y'all. Cheer up! For there stood by me this night the angel of the Lord, whose I am and who I serve. And the angel told me that nobody's going to die. There's not going to be any loss of life. Ship going to break up, but ain't nobody going to die. The angel told me that the Lord had given me all those that sailed with me. So y'all cheer up. Well, how was he able to, to share that with these people? He had been praying and interceding, seeking the Lord concerning their situation, and not just himself, but on behalf of everybody that was sailing with him, right? And the Lord sent an angel basically to, to affirm and confirm to him that all was well because even, be, be, because even before they set sail, the Lord had told him, you got to stand before Caesar. See, you can use things that the Lord has told you in the past to battle fights that you have in the present. If a situation arises that causes you to doubt and move you into fear, you can, you can take what the Lord has told you about a situation and use that to wage warfare and overcome that doubt. You follow what I'm saying? 
Particularly prophecy. That's really what the, the, the spirit of prophecy is for. You get a word, it's to edify you, it's to exhort you, comfort you, it's to give you an anchor for your soul that when you come upon a situation, you can go back. No, Lord, you said this. You said this, so because of this, I know I'm overcoming this. This ain't the end because you said that. I can take what you said here and apply it here and, 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 and cast down those fears and those thoughts and that doubt. Y'all yeah. follow what I'm saying? Yeah. I remember Andrew Womack had a testimony one time. He had, he had received a prophecy concerning one of his sons doing this and accomplishing this. And before all that happened, though, his son was in some type of accident and died. And Andrew Womack is driving to the hospital He's already been told that his son is dead, but his mind goes back to the word yes. that the Lord gave him concerning his son. And he held on to that word and began to speak that word to the point where his son is restored to life. I, 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 sometime after the, the fall, we're going to have a guest here. His name is Pastor Mark DeReza. I, I had a conversation with him uh, about three or four weeks ago, and he told me uh, that he had died <laughs> several months before I had the conversation with him. He, he, he one of them brothers, he out there. He got that, that, that crazy type faith, man. He and his son do some crazy outlandish stuff. We would think. They go up in gay bars and, and witness to gay people. Get them, get them born again. They, what they do for fun, they take jet skis and, and just dr and ride jet skis from, from New York to Canada. They ride out on the water eight hours, come in, eat, rest, go out back out. And so they were riding they, 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 earlier. They was out there on them jet skis. And he hit a sandbar and wrecked and landed face down, broke his neck, and died. Now, I had heard about the accident, but I didn't hear that he died. He told me, he said, yeah, I, I, I died. He said, he said, I've been knocked out before. I know the difference. He said, my spirit left my body. He said, my neck was paralyzed, I was face down, I couldn't do, do nothing but suck in water. I died. He said, my spirit was out of my body, and my son, his son, had circled back around. He said, he said, I saw my son jump on the corpse and hit it in the chest. Said, not, not, he said, no, not on my watch in the name of Yeshua, live! And he started hitting him in the chest. And he felt his spirit being drawn back into that body. So, so they get him to shore, they get the medical attention, so now they're concerned he's been, he been gone too long, he's going to be brain dead. Nothing wrong with his brain, nothing wrong with his mind. He was paralyzed. Couldn't move nothing. Couldn't move a thing. And uh, I said, man, I said, what? What? What word gave you hope? He said, I'm laying there on my back. He said, I can't even control my poop. Paralyzed. He said, and this little verse comes into my mind. This is the day that the Lord has made. And I will rejoice and be glad in it. He said, I just kept saying it. Just kept saying it, kept thinking about it, kept speaking it. He said, and finally, he moved his toe. Then next, he moved a finger. Before you know it, he was able to move everything. But now he'd been in that state for so long, he done lost, he done lost over 50 pounds. So when he said when he came back, he said his exercise was to curl a five-pound weight. He said it was about to wipe him out, five pounds. But at the time that I talked to him, he was back walking up to two miles a day. You follow what I'm saying? Satan tried to take him out of the earth. Why? 
to remove his influence. But his son had a word. Not on my watch. Bam! In the name of Yeshua, live. Now, this just makes me wonder. What would my state be if I had to depend on what my children knew from the word? What would your state be if you had to depend on what your children knew from the word? If you had to depend on the relationship your children have with the word, how's that going to end for you? You follow what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and see, this is what I mean. We got to make our faith personal. Our walk with God has got to be personal. You got to believe in your heart and not doubt that when you call on his name, he's going to answer you. Yeah. And you're going to hear it. You're going to know his voice. You're going to trust his love. And you're going to obey and walk that thing out. Because if he's guiding your steps, he's backing you all the way. He's covenant bound out of a blood sworn oath to see you through and give you the victory. Now, I said after, sometime after the fall, he's agreed to come here and get that testimony. Y'all remember him. Y'all met him. You remember when I had my installation? That big, tall, six foot five, white, bald headed dude that ran up the steps? Well, that's him. I don't know how you can forget him. It ain't, it ain't you know. But that's him. He, he agreed to come. And share that testimony. I mean, to, to have to converse with somebody that has died. You hear about it, you read about it, but I know this brother. The life of faith. You don't, man, when we come to a place where you know what, God, I trust you with my life. I'm going to live by what you say. When you come to the place, you don't take L's no more. You don't take L's. You don't accept L's. You don't accept losses. Why? Because there's always, if you got God's covenant promise, why accept the loss? Now, it might not look like it's working out, but, but if it is, that's not on God. That's on us. Okay, Lord, where am I missing this? Where am I coming up short? Where did I zig when I should have zagged? What did I do wrong? And God will correct us. Get us right back on track. Like you never used to be. Follow what I'm saying? Oh, Jesus. Last thing, I, I got to say this, and I'm all, oh, but, but uh, 1 John 3 and 8. And then we're going, we're going, we just going to stop. Pull up 1 John 3 and 8. Y'all can turn to your Bibles. I don't know if I have a statement. Don't have a statement concerning that verse about, uh, well, let's read the verse first. That's all right. Let's just read the verse first. Okay. He that, uh, okay, this is, I want to get down to it. He that committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sinned it from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of Man, the Son of God, was manifested, right? Why? That he might destroy the works of the devil. So the Son of God was manifested in order to destroy the works of the devil. Now let me get that in the Amplified Classic. But he who commits sin, who practices evil doing, is of the devil, takes his character from the evil one. For the devil has sinned, violated the divine law from the beginning. This, the reason the Son of God was made manifest, visible, was to undo to destroy, loosen, and dissolve the works the devil has done. So the Son of God, Jesus, was made manifest. He was born into the earth for the purpose of undoing the works of the devil. You follow me? When you apply faith in God's word, 
you can undo everything Satan has done in your life. Listen, and leave no trace. You can, whatever Satan has done in your life, you can undo it. See, right here it says, it says the Son of God, who is that? That's Jesus, right? Was made manifest, right? Okay, John 1 says, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God, right? And then it talks about how there was not anything made that was not made by God, by the Word, right? And then later on it says, and the Word was made flesh, right? Or manifested, right? So what we got to understand is anything that Jesus, the man, can do, Jesus, the Word, can do when we apply faith in it. So if the Son of Man, if Jesus as a man walked the earth and undid the works of the devil, faith in his word coming out of our mouths will undo the works of the devil. So anything he has done in your life, you can undo it. You can cause the effects of it to be undone, to dissolve, to be done away with to come to naught without leaving a trace. You follow me? And proof of that is, uh, uh, where is it? I think it's John somewhere, uh, John chapter 9. You remember when the disciples asked Jesus, when the, when the boy was blind, who, when he was born blind, who did sin? He was his parents. Y'all remember that situation? So if you follow that on out, Jesus healed that boy, right? Now, the boy was born blind, right? Now, when the Pharisees get wind of it, I think it's John, is that John 9? Did I give you John 9? I think around verse 18. Go ahead, pull up verse 18, John 9 and 18, real quick, and then we're we going we to we we go out. So... So now the Pharisees got a hold of this, right? But the Jews did not believe concerning him that he had been blind. See, he's healed, but they didn't be, believe he had been blind and that he received his sight until they called the parents of him that had received his sight. In other words, they heard about it, but they ain't trying to believe it. So what they did is they, they talked to his parents. All right, verse 19. And they asked him, saying, Is this your son who you say was born blind? How then doth he now see? The point is this. He was born blind, but Jesus healed him. So obviously there was no trace left that he had been born blind because the Pharisees couldn't tell and had to ask his parents. You can undo any effect in the cur of the curse in your life through faith in God's word to the point that there's not a trace of it left. You just have to be willing to trust God and walk with him. Amen? Amen. Through faith in God's word, we can undo everything Satan has done in our lives and leave no trace. Stand on your feet. Praise God. Father, thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you for your presence today. Thank you, Father, for bearing us witness today, helping us to realize that this is your word and not a man, that even as we are being hearing, we're being healed, and even as we've heard, we will do, and even in our doing, we are blessed. So, Father, I commit this congregation, everyone here, everyone represented here, afresh and anew to your care and to your keeping. And I appeal to you for your goodness and your mercy to show each one of us your salvation in its fullest measure, Lord. And I thank you for it now in Jesus' name. Now, as we end this service, Lord, we'll continue in the communion of the Holy Ghost. We'll continue in the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and in your unconditional love, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Blessings. Hallelujah!